Well, let's kick off. So my name is Michael Leeworthy. I'm going to talk about cloud enabling your small business with SBS 2011, mainly essentials. We'll talk a little bit about a standard, but uh, mainly essentials. Um, so today we're going to go over a couple of things. We're going to talk, uh, who here has seen SBS 2011 essentials? A good low half of you. So we'll go through just a quick recap for the one, for the people that haven't seen it before. A quick recap, what is SPS 2011 Essentials as a product, as a solution? Where does it fit within the SPS family? Um, and then we'll talk about what the cloud actually means to SPS. So let's, let's, let's just do that. So what is, the, what is the cloud actually mean to SPS? Well, typically it's been backup. We've talked about cloud enabling and it's been online backup and there's been online backup tools available in the SPS family for a while. Um, or ad hoc online services, connecting SPS to a, some sort of miscellaneous online service. But now the cloud seems to be everywhere. You probably noticed, right? I mean, everywhere, every Microsoft session, every, we, I have my cloud tattoo, it happens when I went into work. So basically, you know, there is all this pressure on you as customers and partners to sort of understand how all this stuff fits into the cloud. And, when we look at SBS, there can be some confusion here because our SBS product has been traditionally focused on premise. It's been focused on creating easy, deployable solutions that are fully pre installed and pre configured on premise, right? And you know, now you're talking about this cloud, and uh, we've got this on premise solution, and we release SBS Essentials, and we, the marketing team dreamt up all these new words called hybrid and cross premise. And what does that actually really mean? You know, and if I am an SBS standard product, a cu you know, customer, or if I'm a, you know, a partner that, that deploy SBS standard solutions, does that lock me out of the cloud? Do I become redundant? And these are questions that we sort of get asked in a lot of the, in a lot of in a lot of forums. And the big thing is that all of our products can use the cloud, right? Whether they're Windows Server or their SPS standard or, or you know, in their, or their SPS essentials or their Windows Home Server, they can all use online services or cloud-enabled services or platform as a service. You know, they can all use that, that type of architecture in, in various forms. Now, in SBS standard, it's based on Windows Server 2008 R2, so it can fully integrate into any cloud-enabled service that you can integrate R2 in, utilizing active you know, ADFS or, or some other mechanism as well. But with SBS Essentials, we talk about this cross-premise. I get asked the question, does this mean I'm all the way into the cloud if I get SBS Essentials? And the answer is no. SBS Essentials is focused on on-premise solutions. Its core focus is providing core basic infrastructure for small businesses on premise and then giving the widest options available whether you know customers and partners want to utilize this on premise or in the cloud so what do we mean by cloud integration in SPS well i look at cloud by three types of cloud integration there's client cloud um, what's a good example of this hotmail live mail it's a great example of this. Doesn't really matter what server infrastructure I run, doesn't really matter anything. I have a direct connection from my client to the online service. Doesn't matter if I'm in a domain, out of domain, have you know, all the any type of infrastructure, it doesn't really matter. And we, we see a lot of this as well. I mean, we see a lot of just direct client to cloud enablement. Then we have the second one, which is client, cloud, and local administration. So in this case, you still have direct connection from the client to the cloud service. There's no sort of integration in our server architecture, but the administration tools of that online service might be hosted locally. In my, you know, I might be able to administer the cloud service a lot more easier in my infrastructure. And Office 365 is a really good example of this. I would call client cloud local admin an Office 365 model. The connection of Office 365 is client to the online service. It doesn't really you know, play with the server out of the box. I mean, you basically go and subscribe to Office 365 and then you, you can configure your local Outlook client to point to it or Office web apps. Um, however, you can have local administration tools for Office 365 that allow you to go and pre-configure those and you can deploy those around on different clients or servers or things such as that. But there's still this direct connection to the cloud. And the other one I see is this client cloud server. So this concept here is that there is a direct connection or a relationship between the client, server, and the cloud. 
So either the administration is inbuilt into the server model. So it extends my user administration, it extends my server administration, it extends some sort of management, or it utilizes the authentication model that I have. It extends ADFS or single sign-on, so I, I can authenticate to one you know, identity federated services. As I said, it extends the local administration functionality. And the connection can either be from the client to the cloud or the client to the server to the cloud or vice versa. So it's more of an integrated administration field. And the thing with SPS is SPS can completely, um, uh, in both versions, can completely be configured for all three uh, components. The client cloud, you know, you can run SPS for all the infrastructure solutions that SPS provides you know, for your small business. And then utilize just client-directed cloud services. I want to use link in the cloud. I want to use salesforce.com. I want to use some sort of anti-malware in the cloud. I could do that quite and just set it up client by client, easy. If I wanted to use SPS in the second space, I would just install the administration tools on the local server and be able to just configure my cloud-enabled service. And they may appear in the console, they may not, but effectively I'm still I'm doing centralized administration, but it's really no interconnection. Then the third place, of course, we could play in. And this is really what this session's about. Now in the SPS standard environment, it's very similar to the SPS, to the Windows Server 2008 R2 environment. You know, Again, let's if we pick on Office 365, you can go out and subscribe to an Office 365 e plan, the enterprise plan, and that includes ADFS support. And you can configure your SPS server or your Windows server and, and configure that with ADFS for sure, right? So there's that complete ability. Or you can just integrate dynamic CRM or a CRM tool into the Exchange service. You can integrate some sort of online sales um, automation tool into the SharePoint service of your SPS standard environment. And all these things are quite happily available and easy to do. And they're very, very similar to a Windows Server environment. But it's where SPS Essentials really, really differs from this model. Because SPS Essentials automates this model and has a very different focus. So let me talk about, oh, my little logos are um, showing. <laughs> so let me talk about the SPS family just to, I give you the identification of these two editions because we've changed things quite a lot from previous the previous family of SPS. Now SPS itself, to us, is five core functionalities. A Windows Server platform, so it's built on all the things that the latest version of Windows Server um, that we've integrated in. In this case, Windows Server 2008 R2. So it has all the reliability, the security, the functionality, all the elicities that we have um, are available in that Windows Server platform. So in the standard environment, you can scale it up to four processors and 32 megs of memory. It's built on the core Windows Server 2008 R2 standard functionalities. You have access to most of the roles, most of the features. There's a few that you don't have access to, like remote desktop services or um, Hyper-V um, host support. But pretty much all the, you know, the functionality is there for you to be able to configure a fairly effective and deep Windows Server 2008 R2 environment. But on top of that, we then build simple and easy file and print sharing. And this is both for SPS Essentials and Standard. This is just the family. We have out-of-the-box, wizard-driven file and print sharing. Sounds really simple. Number one use feature in most of our organizations. Hey, how do I create a file share? If you never created a file share before, it actually can be difficult to understand all the shit. Which share button do I want the advanced? How do I do this? How do I do that? So we create a wizard. Here you go. Create a file, share it. Create a folder, share it out. Create a, you know, there's my printer, share it out. Again, we want to make it very, very simplified. We create inbuilt backup technology. In the SPS standard environment, backup is being focused on the server, centralizing all the data across my organization to the server, utilizing either manual processes or redirected folders, and then backing that server up. In the SPS Essentials environment, because we're focused at a smaller segment, sort of the, you know, the 1 to 25 or primarily the 5 to 15 segment, we support both server and client backup as well. So we can back up all the Windows PCs and also the Macs in the organization. 
And we, we provide client backup in that smaller space because you'll find in most of those organizations, if they have a server, it's not really providing any server client type application support. It's really just there maybe supporting some sort of file sharing. Or they may not have a server at all. So they've got data all across all those clients. They've got local applications and things such as that. So it's important that we ensure that we can snapshot and back up all those clients to ensure that that business is safe. However, if they're an SPS standard product, a customer, they might have 20, 30, 40, 50 users. In that organization, you'll probably find they have a standard operating environment themselves, and they've centralized their data, or they've got mechanisms to centralize their data. So all the clients have very much similarity. So if I lose a client, I can just basically re-image a, a, a new server, or a new desktop, or a new laptop, and then replay the data down back from that server to that, uh, to that client. So the, the backup strategies are different within these two products, of course. Identity protection. When I talk identity protection, we talk Active Directory. Inbuilt, pre-installed, pre-configured, integrated into all the products and all the features and functionality across the products. And then a phenomenal remote web access portal or an extra net for allowing my external users to come in and access files, um, access their data, maybe even access line of business applications that exist within that remote web, web access. And I can show you a little bit of this um, in, in the new tool as well. And we wrap all that up in a simplified management. Whether it's a dashboard or console, it's an integrated small business view where you take the best practices of small businesses and we create a visual administration tool. So they don't have to go to Active Directory domain services to create a user. They basically go to an inbuilt dashboard easily create a user, and if they're in standard, that user gets created in, you know, their mailbox gets created, the SharePoint, administra SharePoint permissions automatically get allocated, and any other functionality we require as well. In the standard environment, uh, we have inbuilt applications. Exchange 2010, SharePoint Foundation, Windows Server Update Services for patching. So inbuilt, pre-installed, pre-configured, out of the box. So minute one, that box can send and receive email. You can create users, create mailboxes, access the SharePoint site, patch clients, straight out of the box. Right? So it's all completely pre-configured. The SPS Essentials product, we provide that option, and that option is either you can install applications on-premise, for sure, you've got complete support for applications on-premise, and you can install SQL, Exchange, WinSAS, SharePoint, all that type of component on-premise if you want, or in this case, when we look at some of the core applications, collaborative applications, which is the number one workload of small businesses, you know, Exchange and maybe SharePoint, um, we can look at utilizing the cloud or subscription services for those, either Office 365, or Exchange Online, or SharePoint Online, or any other system that integrates into SPS Essentials. The concept here is, you know, the SPS standard product has all this pre-installed pre or pre-configured environment, but does require some regular maintenance and administration because you have all this stuff inbuilt. You've got Exchange on site, you've got SQL on site, and SharePoint on site. So you've got all these technologies that require some maintenance, whether it will be weekly, monthly, ad hoc, managed services, you, you require some maintenance. In a subscription model, you can take that complexity of the application maintenance and you can push that off into the cloud and let the customer subscribe to that and then build some, on, on, uh, some other uh, functionality around it. And then in the uh, family, we also have a, a, a third member, which is which we call the premium add-on. And for those people that know about SPS 2008, we used to have SPS 2008 standard and the premium edition. And the, really, the premium edition included everything that SPS standard had, plus gave you a, a further a license for Windows Server, plus SQL Server for a line of business support in a nice, cost-effective bundled solution, which was actually fantastic. However, if you're an SPS 2011, sorry, SPS 2008, standard customer and then you, you, know, you bought this product and then three months down the track you realized you wanted um, access to a SQL server, you couldn't upgrade to the SPS 2008 premium product. It was near, near impossible based on all the licensing. So you had to go out and independently purchase Windows Server plus SQL Server plus the cows you required of a SQL. And I can guarantee you that cost a lot more than what the premium edition bundle would have cost you. So we took that feedback on and we went, you know what, there's two reasons here. One, we want to create a, a customer choice. If you want to run Windows Server 2008 R2 standard 
plus SQL Server 2008 R2 in your organization as a second server to support an LOB application or to support um, uh, other Windows Server technologies such as Hyper-V or remote desktop services, then the premium add-on you can purchase whenever you want and how many of these you want. You know, there's no limit. You can just purchase them, join them to your domain. And the second thing is because we've got two editions now, or two separate editions, we didn't want to create a SPS standard standard or an SPS standard premium and then essential standard. So it's a lot easier for us to create a premium add-on SKU that you can then apply to either one of these editions. So that's sort of the family in the overview you know, in, the, in essence. Now the big thing about SPS Essentials is that it gives you value right out of the box as a first server. Now I know we're going to focus a lot on cloud on, on, in this subject, but I wanted to really just reinforce this. SPS Essentials is a phenomenal first server solution with or without cloud services. So out of the box, again, based on Windows Server 2008 R2 standard technologies, it provides a huge amount of value add. You know, casting your mind back to the slide earlier, automatic backup of clients and server, support for more, you know, up to 25 devices and users, simplified management console, which I'll show you as well, integrated remote web access, and the ability to extend the functionality by the use of add-ins, so not applications, or administrative tools, but add-ins which will actually extend the functionality of the dashboard, either for an administration point of view or a, or a line of business point of view. So SPS Essentials, straight out of the box, really provides a lot of the core infrastructure that Windows Server provides, all this functionality, at a much cheaper price. You know, it's a very affordable solution for our small business server environments. So to give you a little bit of comparison of the, uh, the Windows SMB product or the uh, SPS Essentials product compared to the rest of the SMB family and I won't go through this in much detail you can have this in the slide decks as well but you know if, if you have a look at them side by side standard and essentials you can see that standard supports up to 25 users where essential supports up to 75 um, in our memory uh, capacity, they both support 32 gigabytes. Our standard product supports up to four sockets, where Essentials is two, generally mainly because in our standard environment, on-premise application support is more of a scenario, so being able to scale that box to greater hardware is definitely a requirement. But they both support things such as file sharing, network infrastructure support, Active Directory, remote web access, and server backup. And our Essentials product really extends this with things such as health monitoring, PC backup, um, and the ability to easily and simply hook into the cloud as well. Now again, uh, I'm not going to go through this in much more detail. You can uh, view this in, uh, um, in your leisure in, in uh, uh, comparing many of the other servers. And if you're not sure what storage server Breckenridge is or Windows Storage Server 2008 R2 Essentials, or what Windows Server Foundation is and how it compares to Windows Server Standard, come and see us at the booth. You know, all the blue shirts in here are working at the booth. Doug at the back and um, Duncan and Bodie, come and see us at the booth and we can talk through these and we can show you demonstrations on how they actually all differ and where and how they'll actually be used in your organization. So let's actually have a look at a, a demonstration of SPS Essentials. Hmm. Okay. So what you're actually seeing here is um, the remote web access component of SPS Essentials. Now if you look at that, that, that uh, image that I showed you before, effectively uh, out of the box we provide a remote web access solution or an extranet solution for our users to access information um, in our organization. In this case, what I can do is I can, easily, um, I can easily get to this via professional domain name. So for example, if I just paste this here, you'll see that I have a professional domain name called cohovinya.com. So I can actually use a professional domain name in my organization and be able to access my extranet through that. Or I can use a Microsoft provision domain name. So we can provide you a free third party domain name or third level domain name called uh, remote web access. So you can be mybusiness.remotewebaccess.com and be able to access your external remote web access server. 
So the good thing about that is you protect your environment um, and your organization. The good, uh, remote web access, for some reason, um, need to log on again. Hang on, excuse me for a sec. Uh, remote web access is completely available anywhere you might have an internet connection. So multiple browser support. So as long as you have an internet connection, you can be accessed through remote web access, either internally or externally to your organization. So this is, a, this is a, a server that sits at my house, right? So we're accessing a server that's sitting in my house. And this could be a small business environment. You can see here that I can see these computers that are online. Belinda and Cameron's computers are online. I can actually connect to them. I could RDP into them, take control of them like that I was sitting in front of them. So for example, if I have a PC sitting on my desk and I'm you know, flying, flying out of the office and I go, oh, there's this sales chart I need that's sitting within an application on that computer, at the airport, I can just whip over my laptop or my you know, portable device, remote web access into that. As long as I have RDP support on that device, I can remote desktop, take control of that PC, um, you know, manipulate that data as I require um, exactly how I was sitting in front of the PC. And this is all happens completely out of the box through remote web access. I can also access things such as all my company information. So anything that's stored within shared folders, I can access that shared folder information. I can download that. I can upload all that information. You can see here I've got a bunch of PowerPoints. I can download that, um, manipulate that. I can upload information while I'm on the road. So it gives me the ability to access my resources when I'm outside of the organization. Also, any type of um, uh, important links can also be associated there as well. As my system is extended, you will see that um, things will be added to the remote web access. So if you come down to our booth, you'll see that we have things like health monitoring agents that are um, uh, available here. So for example, one of those things is if these machines are in standby or in hibernate, I can wake them up and take control of them. So again, if my PC is sleeping, it's the middle of the night, I can use remote web access to wake that PC up with one of our great third-party add-ins and also you know, the Intel V Pro add-ins and things such as that that allow me to do that. So it's a very functional tool for me to access uh, when I'm outside the office. If I've got any LOB applications, they can also integrate into remote web access. So if I subscribe to Office 365, I would see my Office 365 links appear in, in uh, my remote web access client as well. One of the great things it does is on the road is it allows me to connect into my server. So basically here, I'm connecting into the, da the uh, dashboard of my server. And so this is actually running as a remote app. Uh, and the, the, the uh, dashboard is running as a remote app. So you can see it's running through all the security checks to make sure that I'm, I'm connecting to the right, uh, the right type server. The great thing about this is I can also not only connect to this uh, dashboard, if I want, I can connect to the computer itself from remote desktop into the actual server itself if I wanted to do something outside of the dashboard, all through the remote web access portal. Underneath, it's a remote web access gateway, so it's using the RDS gateway technology, but the great thing about SPS Essentials is you don't need RDS cows if you're utilizing remote web access, only if you're accessing a terminal server. So in this example, if I'm just doing administration or I'm taking control of desktops through remote web access, even though I'm using that RDS gateway, I don't need RDS cows, so it's a really good solution. So here's my dashboard. And again, it looks and feels that I'm running this locally, but effectively I'm running this as a remote app. And my dashboard is focused on ease of user administration. One of the big things that we did with the SPS Essentials product is we looked at the way people were using our SPS technology. We looked at the simplified console that we had in SPS Standard. And then when we built Windows Home Server, we found that there's this big proliferation of Windows Home Server in home-based businesses in Soho and in small business. And it took us by surprise the amount of aggressive growth of Windows Home Server in that space. Because when you, when you think about it, these small-based businesses, these organizations under 10 users, all they wanted two things. They wanted their clients to be backed up, so they wanted their PCs to have inbuilt easy backup they didn't have to care about, and they wanted to centralize their data in one place. And Windows Home Server provided that need for them. 
So we went, could we do that type of technology? Could we utilize that administration dashboard that Home Server provided? Could we take that and we could, could we link that into the SPS environment and provide a phenomenal small business solution built on the reliability and functionality that small business provides, but with the ease of administration that maybe something like a consumer portal Windows Home Server provides? And this is effectively how SPS Essentials was born. So here you're basically seeing you know, my home environment. My users is where I administer users. So this is Active Directory. You know, underneath this um, environment is Active Directory you know, domain services. I can actually go in underneath and, and create users in Active Directory domain services if I want. Or in this view, I'm basically I'm looking at the filtered view of AD for a small business. If I wanted to add a user, you can see it's very easy within my dashboard. And as I click through users, you'll see that the information associated with these users will change based on what that user is. Anything I can do is always in the right hand side. So I can view the user properties, see information about that user. If I wanted to add a user, I just click on my add a user and I can say add, I can add a new user, give them a password. Now the big thing here is you can say, all right, all right, I've seen this, Active Directory domain servers can do this, what's so special about it? Well, Level of access, hey, you're a small business. You're either one or two users in most small businesses. You're either a standard user or an admin. I mean, you don't need role-based authorization. You're not, you're not gonna need that deep level of authentication that maybe an organization of 25, 30, 45 people may use. It's all there underneath. But in this dashboard, in this environment, if I've got an organization of 10 users, hey, a couple may be admins, the rest are gonna be standard users. So we're trying to uh, simplify that. Next thing. Here are my shared folders in the organization. I do security at the top level of those shared folders. Um, what security do you want this person to have? Straight within the administration tool. So I can go, you know, I'm gonna give them read write to the operations um, so they can edit operations. And our third screen by default is what external access do you want for this user? Do you want them to have access to those shared folders, those computers, um, those homepage links? Do you want them to have access to the server dashboard? So basically, at that stage, I'm creating the account. I'm provisioned a user locally. I've now created their, you know, their access to the folders, access to the external server. And you can see now that they're saying, if you want to add this com user's computer to the domain, you simply have to do this. Go out to their PC, type in HTTP, WAC, computer name, WAC Connect, and that will walk them through the domain connect wizard. And they don't need to know the domain name. They don't need to know the server name. Well, they do, I guess they do in the, in the URL. They don't need to know the um, administrator password or anything like that. All they need to know is their username and their user password, and they can provision their own PC onto that network. And that also does a couple of other things as well. It installs their computer into the dashboard, which I'll show you in a moment. It sets up the client driver for backup on their PC that enables us to back, back up their PC and wake it up to backup. Um, and it also installs some technology called the Launchpad, which provides them a similar sort of one-click access to SPS Essentials that the Remote Web Access tool provided. So that's basically our user administration. And then if, I've got a, if I wanted to administer that user after the, the fact, you can see here I can go in and define exact things about this user whether they, what access to their shared folders, RWA, and here is when I can provide them permissions to come in and access those PCs. So I don't have to go out to those PCs and make my new user and an administrator on that PC to access it remotely. I can actually do it straight through the dashboard. I can say, you know, give this um, uh, new user the ability to remote desktop into the Belinda PC when they're on the road. I mean, they'll still have to authenticate, but uh, it gives them all that ability. All my uh, computer um, and backup administration is done through the computer and backup tool. And here is when my computers are added to the domain, they basically are seen. Any servers will be seen here, any PCs. And I can view information quickly and easy about those. So I can view the, the properties, you know, what type of information have I captured about that, what backup information, I can view the details on that backup. So you can see this was automatically backed up. It backed up about 127 gigabytes of data. The great thing about this is I don't back up 127 gigabytes of data every time I back up. We use the VSS snapshot technology built into Windows Server 2008 R2, and we're snapshotting at a block level. So backups can actually be as little as 30 or 40 seconds 
per PC if that nothing much has changed. So effectively, we, snap, we, we snapshot on the delta uh, of, those, uh, of those blocks on the PC. So, so um, backup is very, very fast. I can not only back up my PCs, but I can do also simple restore as well. So you can see here I can easily restore files and folders for this computer. Now I'm not going to click on this because it will have to rebuild the, uh, rebuild the backup uh, uh, to, to show me the folder list. And that may take a couple of minutes. We can show you definitely on the booth. But the good thing about this is I can not only restore files and folders, I can restore complete images, uh, PC images as well. So for example here, you can see that I can actually create a user recovery key. So I can create a USB key. So if I have my computer and I drop it and the hard drive goes fry or something like that, all I need to do is replace the hard drive into that PC, plug the USB key in the back, make sure it boots up off the USB key, and about three mouse clicks later, I can replay the last backup of that PC straight down off the wire. So instead of being down for half a day or a full day, being able to restore that PC, I can pretty much restore it in about 20, 25 minutes very simply myself utilizing that last backup. You can also see I can control things like my backup retention policies. We keep daily backups for five days. We then keep a weekly backup for four weeks and a monthly backup for six months. So you can control that sort of father-son, grandfather type relationship in this backup, this backup component. I can also kick off a backup as well. I can say, you know what? Let's, you know, there's been a change on this PC. I want, to I want to kick off a backup. Let's actually start a backup. Again, we're sitting here in Atlanta, this, this uh, service sitting back at, in, uh, in, in Washington, um, and so is these clients, and I can actually just kick off a backup here of that, of that client. And you can see what it will do is actually take a, it, now it's basically doing the, the Delta uh, review. It will take that snapshot and then copy that across. And you'll see that it will actually happen pretty fast while we're talking. Uh, any, any, any additional information is also available here as well, as I said before. I also have the same ability within my server infrastructure as well. So I can, I can set up easy backup for my, my server, both on an internal drive or preferably on an external USB drive. And you can have more than one USB drive for your backup. It gives you the ability to swap them, maybe take one off-site. So for example, my off-site backup for my home server, which is, has the same backup type technology, is my glove box for my car, right? So every couple of days, I just swap over the hard drives, and the server works out the differences between the delta of my USB drive and the current delta of, my, uh, of the backup that's happening as well. And as you can see, it's sort of starting to wander through the backup. Other thing that we have also is inbuilt health alerts. So inbuilt health alerts basically provide an administrator the health of the entire network, but also users get health alerts based on their computers as well. And they get they see this through their launch pad or through a bubble pop-up. The big thing about health alerts, they don't, you know, I'm sure if you've seen MOM or System Center before or something like that, the health, you know, you get the same thing, you get prescriptive guidance and it's you know, go to this KB article and add it to this and take the clause off this and that's your solution, right? These are very plain, prescriptive guidance on how to solve a problem. So for example, Belinda PC, important add-ons um, add should be installed. So here, go, you know, in the alert viewer, click Windows Update. Um, so that user, when they open their work, uh, alert viewer, will have a clickable task called Windows Update that they can click and that will fix this problem. Again, very, very simple for them. If I'm a server, you can see here that I have a, I've got a, a, a hard drive. So one of formatted hard disks are connected to this computer. Um, you know, here's how to actually do it. Or, if you want, I can just click the format the hard drive button. So if I click on that, what it will do is it will automatically launch. Again, we're doing this completely remotely. It will automatically launch the task associated to format that hard drive um, in my environment. And there we go. So you can see I can now walk through the formatting of that hard drive and completely adding it to my server. I'm just going to cancel out of that. All my server folder functionality, um, things like creating server folders, are very, very simple. Remember we talk, talked before about inbuilt wizard-driven uh, 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 file sharing. 
So, you know, I can go and create a folder on the D drive, on the C drive, I can right click it, I can share it, you know, and I can go in and define all the permissions if I want, but, or SPS Essentials, I click the add a folder button. It's going to ask me the name of my folder. It's going to ask me where do I want to put it, whether, you know, what drive do I want to put this on, give me a description. Next thing it's going to say, hey, what's the level of access to it? Well, you know, what do you want? Here's my new user. We're going to give my new user no access. Hey, it's a shared folder, so they'll never see it. It won't show up in there. Shared folder view won't show up in remote work access. Boom, add a folder. So now it's creating that folder, creating the shares for that folder, enabling shadow copies for that folder. So by default, we shadow copy each of our shared directories twice a day. For those people that don't know what shadow copies is, it's uh, an easy way for a user to actually do a restore a previous version of that file without going to backup. So if we shadow copy at 8 a.m. in the morning and I come in at 9.30, I open a PowerPoint file, I delete a, a um, slide and I save it, and I go, oh, I really shouldn't have deleted that slide. Myself, the user through PowerPoint, I can actually view that previous version or I can go to Windows Explorer and view the previous version. And you've probably seen that in your Windows Explorer view, you've seen the sort of the previous version button. Shadow Copy provides that. And also it's saying that the server backup is, um, oh, I need to open my server backup to ensure that this new file folder I've created is included in my backup as well. Very, very simple um, in the way we create uh, folder information. We also have a move folder uh, ability as well. So if I wanted, to, you know, I've got a fault. Here's my new folder. If I'm running out of hard drive space, I can easily just click on the move folder button and uh, it will actually move that, that folder across. So I can actually just move this over to the C drive. And basically what it will do for me, it will copy the information across, copy the shared information across, reapply the shadow folders. So, you know, if you're running out of hard drive space, you can pop a new hard drive in and then move this stuff around really simply. Well, my hard drive management, again, is done via my hard drive view. And if I have new hard drives associated with this, I can, I can assign new hard drives into this, in this view. I can assign them as backup drives. Yes, question? Yes, the hard drive has to be physically attached. Has to be physically attached? Yeah, could it be a 930 target? Could it be a, could it be a share on another? So that it has to be physically attached, either through internal, eSATA, or USB. So we don't support iSCSI target at this stage. Um, however, it's something that we're definitely looking at in our testing configuration since now iSCSI targets available for our Windows Server platform. But we don't support the UNC path or a, or a virtual storage association. However, we do support, um, there's a, a data core um, who are a partner here at the moment um, have just released a tool called Drive Harmony. Uh, for Windows Home Server, and they also support it for Small Business Server Essentials, which can actually create virtual um, hard drives and does things like virtual pooling as well. So if you've got a number of hard drives and you want to create a virtual pool across those hard drives, um, the Drive Harmony tool will actually do that as well. And they announced that today, so you can wander down. And if we've got enough time, I can probably show it to you as well. So at the moment, it's focused on Windows Home Server, you know, because a lot of our consumers like drive pooling, and that provides a, a drive pooling technology. But they're actually going to extend that for Small Business Server Essentials and provide a lot more functionality about that. And they've been providing that type of shared, uh, virtual shared fold, uh, virtual uh, drive pooling and uh, for a very, very long time in the enterprise. Um, we also provide things such as add-in models and stuff. So let me flip back to some PowerPoint and then we'll, uh, we'll wander back into this space. So that was sort of an SPS Essentials overview. Now let's talk about the cloud and how SPS Essentials uses that cloud and let's show some real technologies about that. Many small businesses are in the cloud as well. And this is where this product's focused on as well. Many of these organizations are already in the cloud. And if we look at email as being their primary solution, if you look at that 1 to 25 space, the predominant number of them, over 70% of these organizations, have an online email service already. It's either live mail, Gmail, a provider mail such as Comcast, maybe it's hosted Exchange, but they're actually already utilizing an online service. So when we looked at that, we thought, well, if they're already heavy investment in these online services around collaboration, email and sharing information in the cloud, and then we also have Office 365 and hosted Exchange and hosted SharePoint all coming down the, 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 the um, road as well, how do we integrate our solution into this space and make it easier to keep that infrastructure in the cloud, but also provide value locally as well? So integrating to things like Office 365 is our priority solution for Small Business Server 2011 Essentials, to the fact that we'll actually be releasing an integration tool 
as part of our product um, for Small Business Server 2011 Essentials that integrates into the Office 365, um, uh, into, a, into the Office 365 environment. And however, the thing is that Office 365 is not the only solution, right? As I said before, um, you know, many of these organizations, over 65 to 70 percent of these organizations are already utilizing some sort of hosted um, software as a solution service. So we understand that many of these organizations have existing services that they want to use, or they, they, there are a plethora of other services other than Office 365 that they want to use as well. So SPS Essentials really provides this platform for any type of cloud-based services, whether through host exchange, pop services, free services, and there are a number of ways they can do this, and a number of models that SPS Essentials supports in a cloud-enabled environment, not just hosted exchange, but but if you take a step back from any hosted type cloud service, online service, SPS Essentials can actually seamlessly sit within that environment. So for example, SPS Essentials will offer a very valid on-premise solution to majority of small businesses that use a plethora of different solutions. So for example, we'll provide integrated solutions into things such as Office 365, Exchange, and SharePoint. Um, you know, as I said before, we're going to provide an integrated connection to Office 365, and we're seeing many partners work on hosted Exchange and hosted SharePoint integration. And when I talk about an integrated solution, I'll explain through a demonstration exactly what I talk about when we talk integration, because there's different types of integration which we can, we can do with SPS Essentials. There's also the ability for non-integrated solutions. If you cast your mind back to that whole concept before of you know, the three different sort of cloud focuses, and the second one was administration tools and client cloud uh, focus, you could totally do that. There's no reason that you couldn't administer any cloud service within SPS Essentials and just have a direct client cloud connection. Or you could just run them side by side. Hey, you could do that today. You could be running a BPOS today and you could drop an SPS Essential server in there and you just manage your SPS Essentials environment for your on-premise type solutions, on-premise user administration, remote web access, um, localized backup, and then you'd, you'd manage your BPOS environment side by side and you'd create users in both and you would do the manual synchronization. Yeah, absolutely, there's overhead there, administration overhead. Well, those two will play quite happily, as will all the other non-integrated solutions in that type of environment. But again, what we want to focus on is, yes, we can provide great solutions within this space, in the non-integrated space, and side by side and provide a lot of value. However, it's where the integrated solutions is really where SPS Essentials really provides its most value. So what I'm going to do is um, talk a little bit about our add-in focus and then talk a little bit about how we use this add-in focus to cloud enable our solution. So our add-in focus is functionality that extends, or a, an application that extends the functionality of our system, primarily our dashboard. And we see two focuses here. We see an on-premise add-in which extends the functionality of the platform locally. Um, I install a anti-malware solution and in the dashboard it extends that computer management that allows me to scan computers. It doesn't have any cloud integration at all, it just extends the application locally. And I'll show you an example of this in the demonstration. Or I can have a cloud integration add-on, so it extends the platform for cloud integration. So it might be an administration tool. When we talked about integrated solutions to hosted email, I actually might take the hosted email admin tool that's in the cloud and put it in the dashboard. So I don't have to go to two different systems. I might have to still create two different users in that environment, but uh, I, I have all that administration locally in the dashboard. So it looks and feels like it's part of the dashboard. Or maybe I can use ADFS and single sign-on. So I don't have to create those multiple users. Those users can automatically be pre-provisioned in the cloud. Maybe it's a mixture of both. Maybe it's some other solutions as well. And some great examples of this is cloud integration, is things like Office 365. Cloud backup, being able to integrate cloud backup into the backup services that we provide out of the box, and things like CRM tools out of the solution. And what we can do is we provide extensibility or in multiple numbers of areas. And the way that we build our SPS Essentials product is our add-ins can extend things such as the dashboard, 
um, which is what I showed you before, the launch pad, which is the client enabled tool on the client, remote web access that we saw before, and also health alerts as well. And these add-ins that we're talking about can effectively manage any type of storage functionality, computer functionality, and user functionality. So when I talk about anti-malware, it can automatically integrate into the computer components and extend um, those to ensure I do scanning. If I talk about user provisioning, it can integrate into the users and extend that out. And this is exactly what we'll do around the Office 365 integration and that I'll, what I'll talk about as well. So let's talk about how and why we can integrate into the cloud services technology. Well, as I said before, SPS Essentials out of the box provides a great first service solution and can support on-premise applications. But it's also really good for small businesses that are looking for those cloud-enabled services or hosted LOB applications. And when I talk about cloud service integration, we talk about seamless integration between our dashboard and our system into that cloud service. So it looks and feels like it's part of the dashboard. We are a centralized or an amalgamator of the cloud services administration into the dashboard. And the thing is, it's not just screen scraping administration. We can definitely take their admin tools and we can put them into the dashboard. And that's, that might be quite a valid solution for, for, for an application. But some of the things we'd be able to do is, is extend the administration of the dashboard so this cloud-enabled service becomes part of the dashboard. When I create a user locally, I want that user automatically provisioned in the cloud. If I administer that user locally, I want their settings automatically administered into this cloud. And this is one thing our provider model completely provides us access to do. So it can enable things such as a single sign-on experience. It can do that through ADFS. It can do that through directory synchronization. It can do that simply through password synchronization. It can do that simply of ensuring that we have the same alias locally as we do in the, in the cloud, and the user clicks on the, you know, save my password button. There are different options of this sort of single sign-on experience. We want it to be transparent access for users, and the cloud enablement sh definitely shows that. We'll provide integration to things like Office 365. And we also provide the same provider model for any cloud-enabled service. So the, the demonstration that I'll show you can actually be used for, for, for many types of services, whether they be exchange systems, LOB systems, sales systems, CRM systems. The same concepts are definitely the same as well. So I talked about Office 365 integration. So instead of me showing you the, the slide, let me show you a demo of it. Okay, so this is the dashboard that you saw before. Now, let me preempt a couple of things here. One, this is a prototype. So, this is a pro so it's not a real product, it's a prototype that we, we built with the engineering team um, to help determine the usability and functionality of this type of tool. So, the final product may differ, may look the same, but the best thing I want to tell you here that this is a prototype of functionality of the integration between Office 365 within the dashboard. This is not a real product yet. You know, when we, we'll, uh, we'll uh, provide more information about this product or the integration module, um, as, we, uh, as we call it, around the, uh, in and around the Office 365 GA. Um, and then, you know, and on how to get it, the timings um, and, and the, uh, the architecture associated with that as well. So the things you see today are examples of how we expect to be able to use the Office 365 integration into the dashboard. So what you're seeing here is the dashboard, and this is what you'll see today if you boot up SPS 2011 Essentials, you'll see the Getting Started with Microsoft Office um, tag here. And if you click on that today, it will take you to an online web help website. And depending where we are in the release cycle, this will take you to various things. Eventually, it will either download the Office integration module or it will just launch it. In this case, let's say it's been installed on my server. I click it, it basically launches it. So in this case, I'm, I'm going to walk through a, uh, a wizard of integrating this Office 365 integration module into my environment. First thing it's going to do is ask you, do you have a subscription? Do you need a subscription? We're not a subscription tool. We're, we're not an application tool. We, we need you to go and subscribe to a cloud-enabled service, in this case, Office 365. And why we could build a subscription engine into this wizard and bring all these things in, 
why, well, we're just going to give you the links to the Office 365 tool. They've got a great subscription engine. You can go and choose which, um, you know, whether you want the small business plans, enterprise plans, which plan you want. And basically, during that process, you'll configure your environment somewhat, and then you'll 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 have in return a user uh, password or an email address and a password, which is what we need to configure the tool. So you'll come back and you'll enter this information into our tool. It will then um, confirm your selections and then you will install the Office 365. Now when we say installing Office 365, we're not installing the application, we're installing the connectors. You know, what connection we need from a server perspective um, to, uh, from a local server perspective into that cloud. What are the connection points? Uh, you know, are we doing password synchronization? What are the provisioning things that we need to be able to do? We also are extending functionality of the local dashboard to be able to support that inbuilt administration of, of uh, Office Office 365. So the first thing you'll see is we now have an Office 365 tab in the dashboard. So this may give you an example of things that you may see within the Office 365 tab. You can pull company information in, what billing information, what user information. You know, basic gl quick glance view information. We're not going to do anything very specific here because you can go up to the Office 365 tool and get vast reports of the health of your system and how many users and stuff. The dashboard is all designed for easy user management. So I can quickly glance at this and go, hey, I've seen how much storage usage I'm using. I can see how many mailboxes that I've got over 90% of the limit. I can easily click off to any of these administration tasks, and that will launch the admin tool in the cloud, whether it be SharePoint, Exchange, things such as that. Um, but one of the things we can do is enable a professional domain name. So by default, you can pre-configure um, uh, you know, a, a Microsoft provision domain name, but generally most organizations are going to want their own professional domain name. So when they type in coovinia.com, it goes somewhere. That's my professional domain name. So we can pre configure this automatically both for SPS Essentials and Office 365. So therefore, you don't have to go in and worry about DNS records, MX records, this and that. The system can actually do this for you. And this ability is available today in SPS Essentials. You can buy a domain name and have the system completely configure it for you. So in this example, the Office 365 tool has gone through and said, hey, RWA is turned on. However, your remote access is not enabled with the professional domain name um, and, you don't, and your domain name status is not valid at the moment. So let's go and configure a domain name. And basically, it will launch the domain name mechanisms that we have within Office, within our SPS Essentials. In this case, I'm going to set up a new domain name or I can use an existing one that I might already own. So there's an automated path for this, and there's a manual path for this as well. And you can actually walk through the manual path, and you can go and edit your records, you can install the certificate manually, all that type of stuff. We provide really good prescription guidance, prescriptive guidance on how to do that. But in this case, I want to show you the automated path. So I'm going to set up a new domain name. I'm going to purchase a professional domain name from a supporter provider. And depending where you are in the world, these providers will change. So in North America, GoDaddy and Enom Central Arrow our um, integrated providers to, that are providing this automated solution. You can use any domain name provider if you want, but then you need to work, move into the manual environment, integrate it manually. But in this case, I want to do it automatically. If you're in Western Europe, this will change. If you're in APAC, they'll change. So I'm going to click on the GoDaddy, um, type in my domain name. Now, at this stage, what it will do is it will go off to GoDaddy and it will search to see if that domain name is available. If it's not available, it will tell me it's not available. Um, and then I can do another search. But in this case, my Coho Vineyard's available. And it's saying that if you want this domain name, you need to go and register it. And I click on the Register Now button, and it launches the GoDaddy tool. Um, and I can go in, and I register my professional domain name exactly the way I'd register a normal domain name. So I go in, I buy the domain name. You know, an SSL certificate, all that type of things that I need. And once I've done that, then again, I return back to my tool and I have my admin account and my password account that I've used for GoDaddy. Now, since we're setting this up for both Office 365 and for um, uh, SPS Essentials, in this example, we're actually um, configuring the SPS Essentials site, which is the remote.cohovinia.com. But this will also set up the things, my extranet and my professional um, email alias, the, um, you know, at cohovinia.com, MX records um, also. So I click the next button. I'm going to say, you know what, I want you to set up all this type of things manually for me. And then at that stage, what it will do is we'll com completely configure my local system 
um, will configure Office 365 for me, and then it will configure those MX records and all those alias and CNA records at, um, at GoDaddy and be completely configured. So if I test again, again, remember this is a prototype, um, but uh, if we test again, we should get all green ticks that my, com my, name, com uh, name, com my, name, my domain name is configured, uh, my Office 365 domain name is configured, and then we'll walk through a verification of DNS records because DNS records can sometimes take minutes, hours, and sometimes a little bit longer depending on your provider and, and how they proliferate out. So in this case, basically what I've done is I can now use my professional domain name. So I can now start sending and receiving at michael.cohovinia.com. If I type in remote.cohovinia.com, it will hit my SPS Essentials remote access server. I now have an extranet. You know, if I type in cohovinia.com, it will go to my Office 365 extranet. Um, so it automatically has configured all that connection in GoDaddy for me and the certificates that I need locally on my SPS Essentials server. One of the big things we do is, is we extend the actual dashboard functionality. So everything you think you've seen there was additional to the dashboard. So if we look at the dashboard functionality, hey, I've already got SPS Essentials and I've now subscribed to Office 365. I've got 10 plus users. I don't want to go and, and uh, cre recreate those 10 users in Office 365. I can't think of anything more mundane. So I, instead of doing that, I just click a button. What it will do is it will take all my users here and it will configure them into Office 365. What about it the other way around? Sure, I can do that as well. I have Office 365. I can actually configure my local Active Directory domain from Office 365. So it's going to take the user information out of Office 365 and I can just match them up to an existing user and be able to, to configure that and create those users locally. And I will create those users locally utilizing my default mechanisms on both on both, and then I can go in and maintain and administer those. But the big power comes with when I can integrate this whole provisioning and user management into my dashboard. So here's this user creation tool. We've seen this before. We created a user before. So nothing much is new here. You know, it's creating a user, creating a shared folder. There's my new screen. So what it's done is extended my user creation screen. It's going, hey, I'm going to capture Office 365 settings at this stage and allow me to automatically provision that user. So I can activate that Office 365 user. I can assign roles to them. The roles are based around SharePoint componentry in Office 365. I can give them a mail alias, a mailbox size. Now this may change based on us working with the Office 365 team exactly about what exactly is needed to be created when we first provision an Office 365 user. But effectively what I've done now, if I hit the next button, you can see that Office 365 is now part of remote web access, so I can choose whether it gets shown, the links get shown there. If I hit the create account button, not only does it create that user in the cloud, uh, locally, but it also creates that user in the cloud for me and it gives me the success or failure of that user was created based on you know, whether I need, perhaps if I've got subscriptions available or something like that. So the big thing here is when I've created Jeff as a new user, I've created him locally with the same tool and I've automatically created them in the cloud. I didn't have to go out to another tool to do that. If I want to administer a user in the, uh, locally, if you view their account properties, you can see that um, uh, you know, the, these things are exactly the same we saw before, but now I have a new Office 365 tab. And for example here, I can change their mailbox size straight within my tool. So this concept is very powerful when we talk about centralizing my administration my both local administration and cloud enablement. Now the integration, the connection between the client and the Office 365 tool is basically you know, uh, configured as a, as a client cloud service, right? We're, ba we're looking at centralizing the administration, centralizing the user provisioning of that cloud service, in this case Office 365, into that dashboard. But there's no reason that you couldn't do this with any other cloud-enabled service utilizing our provider model, utilizing our SDK, and being able to you know, integrate your uh, exchange system, your hosted mail system, your collaborative system, your sales tool with the same type of functionality. Now this is a user provisioning tool. You, know, you saw that I could bring in the admin tool components in, I could bring the user provisioning in. But again, the power here is that all my user administration is done into one space. Now why is this important? Well, if I have 10 users 
in SPS Essentials and then I buy Office 365 and there's no connection. Well, now I've got 20 users. And then if I go out and I, I purchase a CRM tool, uh, subscribe to a CRM tool, now I've got 30 users. And then I go out and get a sales, Salesforce enabled tool. So I have 40 users now. If there's no interconnection between any of these systems, I'm managing 40 users. I'm a 10 user organization managing those 40 users is a tax on my time. Every time I create a user, I have to go into each one of those tools and create the user into those tools, administer those users. If I you know, want to change something, I go to each of those tools and do that. And those tools might have completely different administration models. With this tool, I do it once. I create a user here, create some all there. I administer a user here, I can administer the, the settings, the important settings here that are in the cloud. If I remove a user here, it removes them from the cloud, those, those systems in the cloud. So it gives me that ability to streamline my user administration, my management. Now, for those that don't know about Office 365 um, or where, you know, while we're focusing around Office 365, Office 365 has got a number of plans, right? But they sort of roll up into three P plan, E plan, K plan. K plan is for education. Um, e plan is for enterprise. Uh, so it provides you things like voice in your link, provides you 20, um, things like phone support, uh, SharePoint portal server. So it provides you a lot more functionality around SharePoint portal server. Um, and, and it costs a lot more. You know, I think it's, I think e plan started at 16 or 20 dollars per user per month. Now, the P plans still provide a good amount of functionality. They provide Exchange Online, so you have an Exchange Server Online. SharePoint Online, so you have SharePoint Foundation 2010 Online. You provide Link, the communicator aspects of Link. Now, uh, you know, the ability to share desktops and share applications, you know, sort of like MSN Messenger on steroids, right? I mean, it's a really, really great tool for that business type communication. You get Office Web Apps, and you get all these key capabilities as well, you know, the, the ability for um, uh, the ability for um, uh, I've lost my train of thought. 25 gigabytes of mailboxes, active mobile support. Um, I mentioned Office Web Apps as well. Desktop sharing and multi-party IM within our, our link environment. So the and the P plan itself is you know six dollars per user per month. Now it's definitely the one that we're focusing around. In the, offer, in the uh, SBS Essentials product since we move into the 1 to 25 space. This also gives the ability if you grow above SBS Essentials limits, say you're an you know, organization of 20 users and you grow to 30 users, you can still utilize the Office 365 P plan while you migrate off your SBS Essentials on-premise solution into maybe Windows Server 2008 R2 standard. So it does give you that capability to still keep your investment into this. And then maybe as you grow above 50 users, you can then move into greater plans of the Office 365 tool. But all this stuff here is all Office 365, and you can find plenty of information about Office 365 on their websites and in all the uh, presentations that they have in this environment as well. Or if you come downstairs, we're quite happy to talk, to talk through it. The big thing here is that with SPS Essentials and Office 365, you get all that on-premise goodness that we talked about. You know, the, the infrastructure, first server on site, on premise, plus all this t application support. Now, you can do this today. There's no reason you can't go out and get the Office 365 beta today um, and you know, SPS Essentials, and you can run them side by side today. Absolutely. Now, you'd have to administer your local users locally and your Office 365 users in the cloud, and you, but you still get the benefit of the on premise support and the Office 365 support. And when we release the connector, you'll just glue them together, the administration models together. But so my advice to you, if you want to look at this model, is don't wait, right? Go and have a look at this model now. There's no need to wait for the integration module to be released. You can actually get value out of this now, or even value if you want to you know, run this in, in production, you can get value out of running BPOS uh, alongside this as well. So let me show you some, um, let me show you some other examples of some add-ins that we're building around the SPS Essentials product that help both with cloud enablement and access in general. So we talked about Office 365 integration and so that's a you know that's a that's a key thing and then um, 
We also uh, mentioned before that we integrate in a number of other different ways. So things such as anti-malware, cloud backup, CRM solutions, sales solutions. So one thing I want to show you is cloud backup. So what we do with add-ins is add-ins are the ability to um, ex extend our system through third-party solutions. So where the Office 365 integration is something that we've been building, we have many partners that are building additional functionality around SBS Essentials. One of the areas, of course, is cloud backup. And the two big ones we see at the moment are uh, Data Vault's Keep Vault tool um, and the Cloudberry tool. So these fully integrate into the dashboard. So you're seeing here that this is their Keep Vault tool, which has been an online backup tool for quite some time, now fully integrated into this, env into this environment. So it's taken all those folders. So there's that new folder that I created before that brand new folder. It's actually basically, if I create a folder, it will show me in here what's being protected, what's not. If I want to protect that folder, I right click it, enable protection, and now that folder's protected. So what it will do is if there's anything in that folder, it will actually start transferring information um, up into those cloud. Now I can do that real time. I can do it schedule time. I can limit the bandwidth. I can encrypt. I can compress the data. Um, you know, for example, if we we can do it, probably do it on the company folder. And we'll, we'll, well, there you go. So you're actually going to see, you'll see files sort of wandering through. There's 97 megabytes of files that are wandering through. Um, so it's now up, uploading these things into the, into, uh, the cloud-enabled system. So this is happening in real time. I'm basically supporting this. If I wanted to delete the protective files, if I wanted to recover these, I can easily recover them. One click, selective download, and I can view through this. One thing that the Key Vault tool does, which is actually quite good, is it also provides me the ability to back up important files when, for clients when I'm off the network. So we talked about client backup on the network, that I can back up my clients. What happens if my clients are remote and they never come home or they're home infrequently? These types of tools can also take important files off there um, client and back them up into the cloud anyway, cloud them as well. So if they're on the road, I can actually have a scheduled system that says, you know, this folder called important data, make sure that that's protected and gets backed up once a day or real time or something like that. So this is a, a really great tool that enables me to cloud enable my solution and provide me a couple of things. So if I look at SPS Essentials, so we support out of the box RAID, software RAID, hardware RAID, so I can provide data protection that way. We then provide integrated server backup twice a day. So my, back, my server can be backed up twice a day on premise, and I can revolve those USBs I talked about before. And I can provide cloud backup. So I can you know, have three, three levels of redundancy in a small business. I mean, these are the types of redundancy we see in enterprises can be completely integrated into this small business environment. Very, very simple, very, very easily. Now, another couple of things that we talked about before is I talked about on-premise add-ins. So you saw a cloud-enabled add-in there, and we saw the Office 365 one. Well, what about an on-premise add-in, something that's going to extend the functionality on-premise? Well, group policy support is a great one for that. So we've got this thing called the Windows 7 Professional Pack. And the Windows 7 Professional Pack enables me to provide some configuration of my Windows 7 clients. So you have to think, I'm a small business owner and a partner's come in and deployed SPS Essentials and they're providing me some managed services and I might be, they might be providing some private cloud. I, you know, they actually might be hosting my exchange system and they've set all that up. Um, but I've gone out and purchased some Windows 7 laptops and I've handed them out to my, my, uh, my employees. I don't know how to configure their security. I don't know how to make sure their firewalls are turned on. What happens if they go home and their kids change something because the kids are always going to know how to do things faster than I will. So what happens if they've turned the firewall off so they can download the cool application, right? And then they bring that you know, desktop into my environment and there could be a security issue. So group policies are, you know, can be quite complex. So what we've done is we've created a tool, an add-in to SBS Essentials that it can extend the functionality on-premise. We call this the Windows 7 Professional um, Better Together Pack. Uh, so what this does is it provides two things. One, it provides me the ability to do the security settings for Windows Update, Defender, and my, my network firewall. So create that common level of security across all my Windows 7 machines. The second thing it does is, is allow, it turns on folder re redirection and offline files. Now, I usually get asked um, during this time is, 
why do I have to have folder redirection? Why do I need offline folders? If I've got clients on my in my environment, aren't I backing them up anyway? I mean, why do I need to ensure that their files that are sitting on their, their desktops are redirected to my server, that I have a copy of their data on my server when I'm backing up? Aren't I backing up twice? The answer is yes for that, but <laughs> the thing here is that this is really good for mobile users. So I'm a laptop user, as most of us are, right? And so my machine might not be on the network between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. when the backup window is. We can set the backup window, the backup times, right? Well, the PCs will be backed up in there, but what happened to my laptop? I'm never going to be in the office at 11 o'clock. My laptop effectively won't be backed up. I can enforce this onto all my mobile users and say, you know what, when you, when you dump into the office and you plug in, it's going to automatically you know, redirect those file, files. It will copy those files across. So if you worked on files locally, I'm going to take a copy of them onto the server. When the server's backed up, I'm going to know I'm going to have a copy of those. So it's effectively real-time backup for mobile users. So it's a really good way for my laptop uh, users to be able to um, integrate into those. And as you can see, I can choose, um, pick and choose which ones I want. And the second thing is, you know, what uh, basic group policies, and we have a standard set of Windows 7 group policies that are associated with securing Win 7, uh, we can actually then deploy straight down to those users. So you can see there, basically what it's doing is it will create a group policy uh, component for me, then push that out to that Windows 7 machine next time they're on the network. So an example of how we're extending things um, in that. Another cloud, uh, so another cloud tool would be something like this or this. All right, so here's my phone. It's, please ignore any text messages. OK, so here's my phone, right? OK, there's my little boy. Thank you. Bottom of this phone. This is the um, small business server Windows 7 phone integration. So this is, you know, online uh, Windows 7 phone integration into my server. So it allows me to do ad hoc administration of my server no matter where I am. So this is the server that we showed. So I can actually click back to the server and I can show you all these, these alerts. But I can actually view these alerts. So this is that unformatted drive. I can view this information. If there's a repair thing associated with that, I can hit the try to repair button. So for example, if a backup didn't work, or the backup database had found an error, it can actually say, hey, the backup database had found an error. If the, there's a repair button, I can click on that no matter where I am, and that backup database can, can uh, hopefully be repaired. Um, I can also not only view all my alerts, I can look at all my devices. So there are, that's camera and PC that we saw before. I can view you know, the information about that. I can kick off a backup. So I can say, hey, you know, let's start a backup for this, um, for this PC. And then I'm, the dashboard is, well, we can view back and we can see the dashboard starting to back that information up. There we go, backup started. If I look at administration, there's that new user I created as well. So I can look at that new user. So this new user is a bit of a, is a, bit of a naff. He's, ra he's rang me up in the middle of the night and went, you know what, I really need access to that thing and I've just forgot my password. So I can actually change that new user's password on the phone, on the server, I can do that as well. Or you know what? That new user has had his password compromised. I can disable that user um, to, uh, from my phone. So the great thing here is I have ad hoc administration in this environment straight from my phone. The good thing also is that um, this is not just for one server. Uh, you can see there for when I logged on, I can actually put multiple servers on here. So if I'm, if I'm a partner, um, there we go. If I'm a partner, I can actually add multiple servers to this as well. So I can actually get up, you know, I'm managing a couple of servers. I can actually get up, click on the servers, and view the health of these servers completely on my phone. And then if that, that server needs extra help, I can then open up at some sort of device and open up that dashboard without even visiting that customer. If I'm a customer, I can do the same thing as well. I can open up and go, hey, what's the health of my server to make sure everything's all right? So again, the, the ability to use online services that are fully integrated into the solution is a definitely a value add for, for, for this. And the big thing here is it also provides this at-a-glance view. So you can see here, 
now I have, it's telling me I have five errors and one informational um, right there within my server. So I have that Windows 7 phone at a glance view. This, this is going to be made available um, uh, you know, over the next three or four weeks or so uh, uh, as a beta. So you can definitely try this out for all of our Colorado platforms as well. So with that, I have 39 seconds to go. If there's any questions, I'd be really, really happy to answer them. But thank you for, uh, for bearing with me today. I hopefully I've shown you some exciting cloud enablement. We were looking for SPS essentials. Go out and buy for me, please. Thank you.